blessings.
Welcome, welcome all, all are welcome. Favorite time of the year, how about you? This is my favorite time of the year. The seasons are changing, the leaves are falling, and the veils are thinning. Woo! What messages from the spirit world will you receive? to our Samhain ritual organized by the web of life. Uh, the same tune, but a different, different words. This is the ancestor chant and by sister friend Sharon Knight and T. Thorne. So it's two parts. We're going to do the first part twice and then the second part twice and then keep repeating it. All you who have gone before, please listen now. We are listening to all you who have gone before. Join us in peace. Again, all you who have gone before, please listen now. We are listening to all you who have gone before. Join us in peace. Here's the next part. Crossing the river of life and death. Crossing the river of spirit and breath. Again. River of life and death, crossing the river of spirit and breath. First part. All you who have gone before, please listen now. We are listening to all you who have gone before. Join us in peace again. All you who have gone before, please listen now. We are listening to all you who have gone before. Join us in peace. Next part. Crossing the river of life and death. Crossing the river of spirit and breath. Again. Crossing the river of life and death. Crossing the river of spirit and breath. First part, one more. All you who have gone before, please listen now. We are listening to all you who have gone before. Join us in peace. All you who have gone before, please listen now. We are listening to all you who have gone before. Join us in peace. Join us in peace. Join us in peace. Welcome. Unitarian Universalism is a liberal tradition that values freedom in religious thought and journey. We uphold the unity of our interconnection to each other and all of life 
and to the universe in which we exist. We affirm the universality of love and hope as we journey together in community. And so we welcome you, whoever you are, at this moment and wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Good morning. My name is Joanna Person Michener, and on behalf of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Fayetteville, I welcome you to this very special Sunday morning, a service in commemoration of Samhain. Today's service was put together by our Web of Life, our Pagan and Nature Spirituality Group. The group was named for the seventh principle of Unitarian Universalism, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Web of Life and today's service affirm the sixth source of UU's living tradition, spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions, which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. A special welcome to those visiting us for the first time. I know we have some here. I hope you were given all the information that you needed to feel comfortable here today. And if you did not fill out the clipboard information that's in the foyer um, and, and you would like to get our emails, there's a white card in the back of the chairs here in the sanctuary. It looks like this that you um, can fill out, and then we'll send you um, our weekly newsletter that Fawn puts together. It's beautiful, lets you know what's going on in the UU community every week. So just put them in the offertory basket as those come around later, um, or you can return them to the welcome table at your convenience that's out there. And um, our AV person can also help you with hearing devices if needed, David. Also, children and the sounds that they make are very welcome in our services. <laughs> but if you need to step out with them and take a break, or they need to and they want to, <laughs> there are seats in the lobby. And we also have a nursery. Um, we have nursery care downstairs that's also available. And please join us after the service today for a potluck, even if you didn't bring anything. Hang out with us, mingle, get to know us better, and us you, and um, just enjoy some good food together. We'll do that. Today's a very special service, um, unique. It's just once a year. If you have brought photos or mementos of your beloved dead, um, there's going to be time during the service to bring those up to place on the ancestor altar. And if you didn't bring something um, for that, you can still participate. Look on the, in the back of your chairs, or we have some extra ones up here in a basket if anyone would like one. Um, and it's a little folded card, and then you can write the names of your beloved dead to place on the ancestor altar um, later in the service. We're about to enter sacred time. We're about to make this time and this place sacred for our presence and our intention. Let's silence our phones and other devices. We're very glad that you've decided to spend your morning in celebration of the season with us. Samhain was attended by various rites and customs appropriate to the end of an old year and the beginning of a new. Divinations, disguises, and above all, bonfires. As a fire festival, Samhain equaled Beltane in importance 
these were the two great fire festivals of the seasonal lunar-based calendar as midwinter and midsummer were the solar calendar. Fire has always been sacred and magical. In Greek legend, it belonged to the gods and was stolen for mankind by Prometheus. Among the Celts, it seems that the prime purpose of the Samhain bonfire was to repel and destroy any malevolent powers at the darkest point of the year. In much the same way as a fire might be lit to keep wild beasts at bay during the night. While the Beltane bonfires were kindled at dawn, those of Samhain were lit at dusk. Samhain, like many pagan holidays, has been altered and adapted by Christianity to fit within its framework. Christianity's version, All Hallows' Eve, now widely observed as Halloween. Popular Halloween imagery includes pumpkins, skeletons, witches, and of course, the cauldron. The huge pot was the witch's container of magic and was an enduring and widespread pagan symbol of the source of all things. The cauldron had powerful connotations of the deep world womb of the Great Mother, out of which life and wisdom came. In the Greek myth, the sorceress Medea resurrected King Aeson by <coughs> boiling him in her cauldron, much in the same fashion as Demeter restored life to Pelops. The Celts had their own magical cauldron of regeneration. In Britain, Bronwyn the Beautiful brought it as part of her wedding gift when she married Mapleway, King of Ireland. Plunged into this vat of resuscitation, dead men would rise again the following day, but would not have the power of speech. The Welsh bard Taliesin acquired his knowingness when he drank from the cauldron of wisdom that belonged to his mother, Caridwen, the goddess of poetry, rebirth, and transformation. Across the water, Irish Celts worshipped Bythe, the one who boils, who served up helpings of life, wisdom, inspiration, and enlightenment. The Bythe, along with her sister goddesses Maka and Nevin, collectively made up the triple goddess of war and death known as the Morrigan. Male deities had their cauldrons too. The great stew pot of the Dagda, chieftain god of the Irish Celts, always satisfied those who ate from it, and it never emptied. In Scandinavia, Odin became the god of poetry after drinking the meat of the poets, stored in two pitchers, and the cauldron Odririr. Many deities associated with cauldrons have strong links to the other world or underworld. For the ancient Celts, Samhain marked the beginning of winter and the new year. This liminal time was of special importance because the veil between the worlds of the living and dead was believed to be thin, permitting easy passage between worlds for a short time. Let us come together to explore the magic of this transitional time of year with an open heart and mind. Let us invite the possibilities when everyday boundaries may not be what they seem. So, so may, may it be. be. The God in the Wildwood, at the sacred center, in the grove of all worlds, he sits with legs crossed beneath an ancient oak, in trance, connecting the three worlds, earth, sea, and sky, and the worlds behind the worlds. The God and the great tree are one. His immense limbs, widespread, stretching into distant sky and starry space. His massive trunk, spine of the metal world, is a heart of the ancient forest around which all life, all worlds turn. 
his limitless root web growing deep into secret earth and underworld. Above him, the great turning circles of sun, moon, and stars. All around him, sub subtle mo movements of the leads in melodious singing air. Everywhere, the pulsing, gleaming force awash in drifts of gold and shimmering mist. Beneath him, soft moss creeping over the dark, deep moist of spawning earth. At his feet is the great cauldron from which the five rivers flow. Through the forest stillness they come, whispering wings and secret glide, rustling leaves and silent step, the first ancestors, the oldest animals to gather around him, blackbird keeper of the gate, stag of seven times, master of time, ancient owl, crone of the night, eagle, lord of the air, eye of the sun, and salmon, oldest of the old, wisest of the wise, leaping from the juncture of the five springs. He welcomes them and blesses them, and they honor him. Carnunus of the nut-brown skin and lustrous curling hair, the god whose eyes flash starfire, whose flesh is a reservoir of ancient waters, his cells alive with mystery, original primeval essence, Carnunos in his ancient forest, his sacred temple, his holy grove. Carnunos and his children dream the world. Cast a passable circle around our go to focus the energy and help it grow, to make protection Sure and true, to guard us now in all we do. And when we are done, this enchantment will cease. And at that time, the circle will release. Three times around the wheel I go. As above, so below. The circle is. At this time of liminality, we commemorate Samhain. We honor nature's last vibrant show of colors. We honor the earth as she slips toward slumber. Welcome, Samhain, mystery to bring to land, to us, to all. Welcome, Samhain, remembrance we sing within and round us all. Please join us, if you will, in welcoming the four directions and elements. If you like, face each direction in turn or simply envision it. Hail, guardians of the east, realm of air, your gifts of sight and wisdom fair. Winds of change, we welcome you here to, to mark, mark the, the seasons, seasons of the year. Hail guardians of the south, where fire burns bright, your gifts of hope and lingering light, flames of remembrance, we welcome you here to mark the seasons of the year. Hail guardians of the west, deep water clear, your gifts of connection and love draw near. Flowing eternal, we welcome you here to mark the seasons of the year. Hail guardians of the north and strength of earth. Your gifts of deepening, wisdom and worth. Grounded in love, we welcome you here to mark the seasons of the year. Hail spirits of heart and hearth. 
mysterious powers of death and rebirth, bringing us solace, we welcome you here to mark the seasons of the year. Hail spirits, source of all, powers of the ancients, to you we call. Moving in us and through us, we welcome you here to mark the seasons of the year. And at the center, we light our living flame. Please join me with these words. We light this chalice in honor of God's sacred dance of the living and dying. May its flame remind us of those who have passed to us by the presence of holiness. May it remind us that we, too, are participants in the dance. The Ozarks is home to a giant white deer-like creature with blooming dogwood branches growing from his head instead of antlers. The blue haze that hangs over the Ozark Mountains in the early mornings and especially in fall and winter is his spiraling exhalations. The Snuffus is also said to have the ability to fly and leap into the trees. In a lot of the lore, it's not because he has wings, but more like he has the agility of a primate. Because of this, the Snuffus is sometimes even depicted as a tall man with a deer head. In Ozark lore, white animals are regarded as an ominous omen, and perhaps this is a cultural memory of the caution and respect afforded to other world creatures. There are clear mythological links between the Snuffus and the white stag of Arthurian legends in the British Isles. Both are white deer who appear in order to lead people deeper into the wilderness on some kind of quest. Some versions of the Snuffus legend depict the mystic white deer as a token of death, following the Celtic pattern of hellhound warnings in which one sighting leads to delight, a second sighting of the Snuffus summons fear, and a third sighting results in death. But most likely, you will never see him. He will run in circles around you just out of sight as you walk through the woods. You may hear the bird song in his branches, or even catch a glimpse of a dogwood petal, but you won't see him unless he wants you to. And you may be encircled in the haze of his blue, misty breath until you see nothing else. If the Snuffus is a continuation of the Celtic belief, we might also ponder if he could also be a local manifestation of Kernanus. On the surface, Kernanus, the god with antlers, is seen as the god of nature, fertility, and prosperity. But he is also a mediator between opposites, a god of biodirectionality and exchange, reciprocity and ambiguity. He me mediates between upper world and underworld, wild and civilized, light and dark. He's an opener of the way, a psychopomp who guides the dead on their journey to the afterlife. <laughs> the Lord of the Otherworld God type has manifested in different ways in Celtic myth through the ages. With and without the antlers, Sir Nanus is 
also closely connected to the leaders of the wild hunt, a folklore motif in which a group of spectral riders are led by a deity associated with death, a gathering of lost souls that occurs in the last months of the year. Today, we honor the great Snopus with an offering of acorns. Where is the stag of seven tines? Where is the woodsman of the pines? Where is the hunter of the fell? Where is the wizard of the well? Where is the green man of the leaves? Where is the reaper of the sheaves? Where is the master of the maze? Where is the son of autumn days? Where is the god of corn and grain? Where is the consort who is slain? Where is the prince of hoof and horn? Where is the one who is reborn? The stag has fallen to the bow. The woodsman lays the great tree low. The hunger goes in search of game. The wizard listens for his name. The green man's lying on the loam. The reaper's gone to harvest home. The master stands where center lies. The sun slips down the autumn skies. The god has fallen in the field. The consort lies upon his shield. The prince is past all reach of men. The one is the womb again. Please join along. When you get the tune, there'll be a, a chorus happening. There is a time for love and laughter. The days will pass like summer storms. The winter wind will follow after. But there is love and love is warm. There is a time for us to wonder. When time is young and so are we. The woods are green. new the world is free there is a time when leaves are falling the woods are gray the paths are old the snow will come when geese are calling you need a fire against the cold there is a time for us to wonder Sweet. 
Little Moon Samhain Adventure, written and illustrated by Nixie Fox Foster. Little Moon woke with a stretch and a yawn. The moon shone down on a frosty lawn. Wakey, wakey, sleepyhead, it's time to jump out of bed. As the sun begins to rise, it's Samhain, Little Moon cries. And so begins this story when one year ends and the next year begins. The nights grow dark and the wind blows leaves in an arc. No more sleeps, no more sleeps, no more sleeps, Mom heard as Little Moon skidded through the door. Oh, wow, there on the table is the biggest pumpkin you ever saw. It was nearly as big as Little Moon is tall. A waft of hot chocolate fills the air and Mom strokes Little Moon's hair with care. It's time for snuggles and tales of times before, listening to ancestral lore. Shared tales of memories remembered, stories begged of the times when Little Moon was too small and those of ancestors who came way before. As the last sip is drunk, the day begins with fun galore. Pumpkins are carved, masks are created, soul cakes are baked, memories made. But the most fun of all is when the sun begins to fall. The table places are laid and homage paid. Mom holds Little Moon's hand as out go the lights and they step into the night. With a tummy full of treats, Little Moon spots the bonfire that awaits. With their head resting in Mom's lap and the bonfire warming their back, Little Moon begins to drift to a world full of folklore, wonder, and myth. The stars above their head dance and images appear in a trance. Hooves sound like thunder as the wild hunt appears. Yapping and howling fills the sky. It is time. The wheel is turned and fates are burned. The leaves fall and the old year is no more. Storms, magic, and sudden change as the stars rearrange. Gwen jumps down and dresses in his holly gown. It is the time for him to finally take the Oak King's crown. Little Moon watches as the two kings battle and quietly the queen begins to alter. The last of her cycle for this year, crone she becomes, the one most dear. It is time for the last of tonight's guests to appear. Please welcome the blue hag with a cheer. Now don't be afraid, she's not what you hear. She doesn't eat children, just herds deer. Powerful and wise, here to guide you through the winter, cold and bitter, waiting for spring to arise. A little sleepy moon with a smile upon their face, a story read as mom tucks them in bed. And so the story ends until the next turn of the wheel. At this darkening time of the year, our thoughts turn to things past, to life retreating to those who are no longer with us. Let us begin by honoring the ancestors. Ancestors, when you were born, the earth became your body, the stone became your bone, the sea became your blood, the sun became your eye, the moon became your mind, 
the wind became your breath. When you passed to the other world, your breath became the wind. Your mind became the moon. Your eye became the sun. Your blood became the sea. Your bone became the stone. Your body became the earth. When we were born, you did the same for us. You called forth the earth and rocks, the sea arose and the sun descended, the moon shone down and the wind sang. For those who come after, we shall do as you did for us. When we are gone, we shall do as you did before. Ancestors, we honor you. We light these candles of remembrance now so that our own beloved dead may find their way to our hearts that we may be open to the wisdom and messages of hope and love that they would offer us if only we would listen and heed. We light this candle to beckon our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, all of the ancestors whose love and care and sacrifices we owe to our very existence. We light this candle for other family members who have gone before us, spouses, partners, children, siblings, aunts and uncles, cousins, nieces and nephews, and give thanks for the richness and love they provided in our lives. We light this candle for friends and members of our community who have died this year in thanksgiving for the lives they shared and contributions they made to the life of this community. We light this candle for our spiritual ancestors for all of those who have taught us the values by which we live, who have given us confidence in our own spiritual worth and the worth of every creature. We light this candle for ancestors of the land, for those who lived and died here in the distant past and also spirits of the landscape itself. And we light this candle for our beloved pets, for those comp constant companions who have brought us comfort and unconditional love. And now, as the music plays, we invite you to come to the altar and place on it a photo of your beloved dead. If you haven't brought a picture, you can write their name on one of these cards. Uh, they should be in the back of your seat. And... <laughs>
Across history, we see a variety of cultural rituals dedicated to remembering and honoring the dead. One reemerging theme is the practice of offering food to the dead, and in some cases, eating alongside the dead. While we typically imagine spirits as non-physical and not requiring earthly foods to, to sustain them, sharing meals is a family pastime that reinforces and strengthens our bonds to one another. It makes sense to invite our beloved dead to dine with us when the veil between worlds is thin. One of the most well-known cultural rituals incorporating food into the celebration of the dead is El Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. Widely observed in Mexico, this late fall holiday is celebrated with brightly colored decor, calaveras, and flowers. The Day of the Dead festivities bring together the living and the dead through the sharing of special foods and beverages. Similar celebrations happen across the globe and include All Souls Day in Italy, Hanal Pixen in Belize, and Dia de las Nietitas in Bolivia. Celebrations throughout Latin America trace their origins to pre-Columbian indigenous groups. Within the Ozarks and Greater Appalachia, we have a rich, albeit lesser known history of using food to connect and, and communicate with spirits during this time of year. At Samhain, unmarried women set up a dumb or silent supper just before midnight as a method to divine their future husband. The love ritual, which originated from the British Isles, involved preparing the supper backwards in every respect. Chairs were turned backward, place settings were reversed, and dessert was served first. Critically, during the ritual, everyone had to remain silent or the spell would be broken. At midnight, the spirits of the husbands-to-be would enter the room or even arrive in the flesh. Whoever sat next to the woman was thought to become her future husband. Some accounts of silent suppers had a more sinister twist in that they could harbor a bad omen. Seeing a coffin appear at midnight meant the woman would not marry and her death was imminent. <laughs> Tales such as these were designed to deter young women from participating in superstitious rituals. Nonetheless, silent suppers generally were treated as party games for young people, and as such, the girls' mothers often encouraged young men to burst into the room, sometimes through the windows. <laughs> Records of silent suppers date back to the 1600s in the British Isles, with accounts of the practice continuing through the early 1900s in Appalachia and the Ozarks. In England and Scotland, there was a particular emphasis on baking cakes for the Midnight Supper. More recently, modern pagans have revived the practice of silent suppers at Samhain as part of the season's Remembrance of the Dead celebration. Today, we will hold our own version of a silent supper. In the interest of time, and as a nod to our Ozarkian ancestors who served dessert first, we shall share a sweet, a silent sweet with those visiting from the other world. As we quietly pass around the sweets, let us be silent and envision our beloved dead together with us in this sacred space. May they receive the spiritual essence of the cakes offered to them at the altar. May we enjoy these sweets together and the sweet feelings they bring. We shall remain in silence for one minute and one second to honor the spirits here with us today.
dwell upon that farthest shore. With you we eat and pray this day. Your gifts of wisdom we shall repay. To you we call without fear. Your voices now we welcome here. Ola Bell Reed, an Appalachian folk singer born in 1916 into a family of 13 children, a musical family. Her mother passed down all the Appalachian folk ballads that eventually made their way to the Ozarks. In the 70s, she was a featured performer at the Smithsonian um, Folk Festival, and she recorded 75 songs for the Library of Congress. And in 1986, she was awarded the National Heritage Fellowship by the National Endowment of the Arts. And this is her song, My Epitaph. When I go from this life, let me go in peace. I don't want your mom. you give me please give them today don't waste their beauty on cold lifeless clay one rose with love oh it could do so much good God would give it if they just understood. Now God gives life freely, then takes it away. What we do for each other, let us do it today. Sing my praises after I'm gone. When life has departed, 
it's not me anymore just a form that has suffered a still heart that was sore for the soul that has blossomed oh it don't need you anymore so let it go free Hail to the ancestors, those who have gone before. Grant us your blessings in all things that you embody. Bless us with the gift of wisdom and guidance, that we may draw on your experiences and learn from your lessons. Bless us with the gift of strength and resilience, that we may face life's challenges with courage and determination. Bless us with the gift of connection and community that we may be part of a supportive and nurturing network of kin. Bless us with the gift of tradition and heritage that we may honor and preserve the customs and beliefs of our forebears. Bless us with the gift of remembrance and commemoration that we may honor and celebrate the lives of those who have passed on. Bless us with the gift of continuity and legacy that we may leave a positive and enduring mark on the world for future generations. Hail to the ancestors, those who have gone before Grant us these blessings that we may honor you always. Please join me with these words as we extinguish this flame. We extinguish this flame. We not this meeting the light of the night. into the world and into our lives, shining on the wheel turn. Please join us, if you will, in our farewell to the four directions and elements. Guardians of the North and strength of Earth, we thank you for deepening wisdom and worth. Farewell and blessed be. Guardians of the West, deep water clear, we thank you for connection of love so dear. Farewell and blessed be. Guardians of the South, where fire burns bright, we thank you for hope and lingering light. Farewell and blessed be. And guardians of the East, realm of air, we thank you for sight and wisdom fair. Farewell, Farewell and, and blessed be. We thank the spirits of heart and hearth, mysterious powers of death and rebirth. And we thank the powers of the ancients, the spirits of life, of all existence. We, we thank, thank the, the powers, powers of, of the, the stars, stars above, above and, and the, the earth, earth below. For this time we have shared 
our place in the flow. Farewell and blessed be. May our circle of love and friendship not be broken, but open up as a spiral, winding and weaving as we go forth into the deep and blessed world. And in our going, may we be blessed with all good things on this day and forevermore. Merry have we met, merry do we part, and so we hear and meet again, blessed it be. This fellowship is a community in which all are welcome. Its energy and resources feed the fire of our spiritual growth. Its wealth and hearth are what we share. As we contribute to the life of the community, we affirm the spark of life it brings to us. Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen us, our fellowship. We are a fellowship of action and activities. These are events and activities in the bulletin and on the screen. So take a look for special activities that you might be interested in. We're going to have the potluck today. And also, um, it's not on here, but at 1 o'clock, the um, Welcoming Congregations Committee is meeting. You're welcome to join us. Um, grounds. On Thursday, they do such amazing work. Are there any special announcements? The pledge drive. <laughs> the pledge drive is ongoing through December 3rd, um, and the uh, pledge drive packets have been mailed out. So if you want to fill those out and get them back to us, that's awesome. Time change. When is that? Next Saturday? Next Sunday? Oh, okay, good. I'm glad it's there. <laughs> so, thank you for celebrating this turning of the season with us today. Web of Life celebrates eight pagan holidays a year known to modern pagans as the Wheel of the Year. 
These are the solstices, the equinoxes, and the quarter days in between. Our next turning of the wheel will be an evening service on December 21st at 7 p.m. to commemorate the winter solstice. And we hope to see you there. Starting and ending with the cauldron. Please sing along and uh, be, uh, feel free to get up and meander about and share in the cauldron of coffee hour. <laughs> <laughs> cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around a stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes, ring around the stone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes. Wiser than before, cauldron of changes, ring of the bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people. Wiser than before, cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring around the stone. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people. Wiser than before, we are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. We are the old people, we are the new people, we are the same people, wiser than before. Cauldron of changes, feather on a bone, arc of eternity, ring.